Hi, <clears throat> I am Mohamed Sadri, PhD student, University of Bologna, postdoctoral researcher at TU Kaiserslautern. These are a series of edu educational videos on Xilinx Link. I'm trying to transfer my information and my experience on Xilinx Link to you through these videos. And my first focus point is XI and XI interfaces and anything related to XI since this is very important. So before actually going into the Zinc architecture, I, I should discuss what is XI, what is XI interconnect, and how do you create XI peripherals. In this video, I'm, talking to talk, I'm going to talk about what is an XI interconnect. In the previous video, I talked about what is XI, what is an XI master, XI slave. So suppose that you have a set of XI masters and a set of XI slaves and each of these XI masters should be able to initia initiate transactions to each of the XI slaves. How do you do that? There is a unit which we call an XI interconnect and this unit is responsible for connecting the XI slaves and XI masters. The XI interconnect will be a slave device for XI masters and will be a master device for XI slaves. Then there will be a kind of address map for the XI slaves which are connected to each XI interconnect. When the XI master wants to initiate a transaction, either read or write, to any of the slaves, it should do the transaction according to the address range of that slave. For example, here, for each of our slaves, we have one address offset or one base address and we have an address range so whenever any of these XI masters here want to for example initiate any read or write transaction to this memory block here it should do the transaction to this address range and it is again the same for the other slaves so practically the XI interconnect contains a table a kind of address decoding table which every time a new XI transaction comes into the XI interconnect the XI interconnect will first look at the address of the XI transaction and then routes the transaction to a suitable XI slave through the decoded address. XI interconnects are very flexible. As I will show you in the Vivado environment, you can easily change the number of slave and master ports of an XI interconnect. So as of the current design, of XI interconnect in Vivado, you can have up to 16 masters and 16 slaves connected to one XI interconnect. Then XI interconnects are capable of doing width conversion. For example, you can have one XI master connected to an XI interconnect which has a data bus width of 64 bits. And on the other side, you have an XI slave which has a data bus width of 32 bits and the XI interconnect is responsible for converting the transactions happening on the 64 bits side to the 32 bit side. Furthermore, the XI interconnects are also capable of conversion. Usually they are capable of conversion between XI3 and XI4 standard. For example, as I will show you later, the Xilinx uh, PS of the Zinc is operating based on XI3 standard, I would say, 
However, the rest of the logic that you design on the PL, on the programmable logic, they are all XI4. And XI interconnects are responsible for transferring or translating XI3 to XI4, which is something very simple, is not special, because these two are principally similar. Then, XI interconnects can contain slices of registers to improve performance. So they can have internal pipelines of registers that will inc increase the latency of data being transferred from one slave port of the XI interconnect to the master port of XI interconnect, but at the same time, it will improve your clock frequency. I will show you later in Vivado environment, how do you enable these register slices and also input output FIFOs. Finally, the two sides of the XI interconnect ca can run at different clock frequencies. So it can connect also two different clock domains together. Here is an example. Here we have one XI interconnect and one XI master, one XI slave and we have two different clocks clock one clock two each of these guys is operating as its own clock domain and the XI interconnect is the one who is responsible for connecting these two clock domains together usually in our designs this is not happening usually in our designs the whole system is using a same clock but there is possibility to have two different clocks and then here in this figure what I see the XI master 1 which is a CPU has a data bus width of 64 bits while the XI slave has a data bus width of 32 bits and the XI interconnect is the one who translates the 64 bits transactions to 32 bit transactions so each single bit 64 bit transaction will be converted into two 32 bits sing, um, 32 bits transaction data transfers now another interesting point is that XI interconnects can be hierarchical meaning that you can have one XI interconnect connected to another XI interconnect why should I do that there are several reasons that you may need to have hierarchical XI interconnects the first one may be the number of ports on one XI interconnect is limited suppose that you have consumed all of the available ports on this XI interconnect but you want to connect more slaves to your XI system you want to add more slaves to your XI system so what you do you connect one of the ports of this XI interconnect to another XI interconnect on on the other XI interconnect you put your more slave devices another reason uh, that you may like to do it is to keep the your architecture scalable and easily expandable that I will show you later in our other videos in fact this component here this region here the XI interconnect and these three slaves can be one complete separate unit and can be treated as a complete separate for example core IP soft IP core and then you insert this guy into the rest of the design and you connect this guy to the rest of the design I will show you practical examples later so here in this example what do I have I have one XI master one CPU which is practically capable of accessing any of available XI slaves through its port I have also one XI master DMA with the same capability and then I have one XI master zero here which is practically capable of accessing only these guys here on this XI interconnect
There are a set of rules that you should obey while using AXA interconnects. The rules are the most important ones are first the address that you define for your AXIO slaves should not have any overlap. In fact, the address regions that you define for any of AXIO slaves should be complete separate region and should not have any overlap with any other region. This is something obvious. For example, here, if the address range of this AXIO slave is beginning from 4000000 to this number then this guy cannot begin from the same address this is something completely obvious in fact this guy should begin from somewhere after this address another very important point regarding defining addresses for XI interconnect is the alignment of the address sometimes for some axial interconnects this rule exists for some other axial interconnects this rule doesn't exist so if you are using vivado and the vivado environment you should obey this rule it is important and the rule is very simple suppose that i have one axial slave which is occupying an address range of 4 kilobytes and I have another AXI slave which is occupying an address range of 2 gigabytes the rule says you cannot put these two guys side by side in the address range just one after another what do I mean by that? suppose that for this guy you have put the AXI slave on this address for the next guy which consumes a, an address range of 2 gigabytes you cannot directly begin from the next address of this address I mean the next value for this address will be this this number you cannot directly begin here in fact the first address that you can really put this guy on that address is this address why because you should mm, your address that you are defining for this guy should obey the alignment rules should be obey should 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 be aligned with the two gigabytes uh, address ranges okay this is the end of the video related to AXA interconnects I would like to notify that this is a hobby these videos are not official but I would like to thank Professor Luca Benini of University of Bologna and ETH Zurich and Professor Norbert Rain of TU Kaiserslautern for their support without their support these videos would never have come into existence and you can always find the latest videos and materials related to my zinc training course on either green, green electrons or googlia.com thank you